Hi, thanks for joining me for Summer Safari Episode 3. I'm excited to see you guys and to share with you about our next animal that we're going to learn about. Now, if you'll recall, in Episode 1, we talked about the dove and we learned that God gives us hope. And last week, we heard a story about camels and how God leads us. And today, we're going to hear how God provides for us. So, um, before we get into our story, though, I would like to go ahead and play a game with you guys. Um, we did this on our Zoom, and it was super fun, and I found a way for you to do it with me, too. So, um, today, we're going to talk about quail. Um, quail are tiny birds, and if you look closely, you can see I've put some quail. They're on these white pieces of paper all up behind us. Um, that's our animal for today. And we're going to see how God used that um, in an amazing way. Um, but quails lay eggs. And so I thought it might be fun to play a game of eggs. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to have you look carefully, carefully, carefully into my basket of eggs and study those for just a minute. And I'm going to take one away and then see if you can guess which egg is missing by describing it. Okay, I'm gonna give you another second. All right, I'm now gonna take one away. No peeking while I remove it. I'm gonna hold this back up and you see if you can shout out, oh, they're moving a little bit, which egg is missing? Which egg is missing? Do you remember? Shout it out to someone in the room with you. And if you said the blue egg with white polka dots, then you were right. Nice job. So that's a fun game you can do at home too. So, um, so we're gonna hear about how God provides for us. And our story takes place after the Israelites were rescued from slavery in Egypt. Do you remember who it was that led God's people out of Egypt? If you said Moses, you would be correct. And there were some amazing things that happened while Moses was leading them out of Egypt. Um, one of the most exciting was the parting of the Red Sea, if many of you have heard that story before. Um, does anyone remember what book of the Bible the majority of this story takes place in, it is in the second book of the Bible, Exodus. And our story today comes partly from Exodus and it's combined with a little bit from Numbers, which is which book of the Bible? Let's count that down together. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. You're right, the fourth book of the Bible. So Moses um, is leading the people. They're wandering through the desert. And I want you to imagine how many of you have been on a hike with your parents before? And the hike is going on a little bit longer than you expected, and it's really hot outside. Um, do you maybe start to grumble a little or say, how much longer is this gonna be? I'm hungry, I'm thirsty. Mom and dad, will you carry me? Well, I want you to think about how you felt on that hike. That's exactly how the Israelites were feeling. And I'm going to read to you from um, one of my favorite storybook Bibles. This is the Urgemeyer Storybook Bible. Um, and I really enjoy it. And it has a nice summary of the story. If you want to read it for yourself, you can look in Numbers and in Exodus. Um, but I'm going to read it to you now, okay? So, like fretful children, the Israelites began to find fault with Moses and Aaron. First it was one thing and then another. There was little food to eat in the great wilderness. They were hungry. Then they forgot how much they had suffered in Egypt. They forgot how many times God had already helped them out of trouble. They thought only of how hungry and unhappy they were. We wish we had never left Egypt, they said. There we had plenty of meat and bread, but you, Moses, have brought us out into this wilderness to die of hunger. It hurt Moses to hear the people complain, but God also heard the people and he told Moses, I will not let them die of hunger. I want them to know that I am the giver of all their blessings and in the evening I will send meat to them. That evening, 
quail flew into the camp. Bushels and bushels and bushels of quail. So there was so much meat for God's people to eat. That's our story today and that quail is our animal. Now, I have a couple questions for you. How did God know what they needed? Were they praying to God? No, they were talking to Moses. They really weren't even talking to Moses. They were complaining to Moses, but God heard them because God knows what we need. Even when we don't tell him, he knows what's in our hearts. He knows what's in our minds and what our thoughts are. And he gives us what we need. Now, remember that isn't always necessarily what we want, but it's what we need. Now, here's a question for you. If God already knows what you're thinking and he knows what you need, do we still need to pray to him? I want you to think about this. What if you had a brother or sister and you knew everything they were thinking all the time and you knew what was in their heart and you knew what was in their mind? Would you still want them to talk to you? It might not be much fun if you just had to think about what was in their mind. And God more than anything wants to have a relationship with you and he wants to know you and he wants you to talk to him. But he knows what you need and he always provides it for you. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel really safe. So I'm gonna show you what Charlotte did for this page in the journal. Now remember, this is your journal to do how you would like to do it. Um, I just suggest that maybe you put a picture of the animal that we're talking about and our sort of theme, which today is God provides for us. And I'm gonna show this a little close. It's kind of light colored. So you might have to lean close to see. But there is Charlotte's journal and she found those pictures of the quail over here on this side um, on the computer and she printed them off. So you can ask your parents if you wanna go to, I think we got them at supercoloring.com, but lots of um, pictures of quail that you can color. And she cut them out and she wrote, God provides for us. And then I thought this was neat. She put some things that God provides for us. And to do this, she used some stamps. If you have stamps and stamp pads, where you could draw them, or you could cut pictures out of magazines. So she said, God provides us with pets, our pets. I'll move that a little closer. There you go. And with love, and with our family, and with food. She put a cupcake there. I really like that a lot. And then I thought this was neat. If you know some more of the story, of Moses um, and God leading the Israelites through the desert that God stayed with them and he was a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. So again, I'm always excited to see what you do with your journal. You can share it with me next week on our Wednesday Zoom or your parents can put it on our Facebook group page or they can even take a picture and text it to me if you would like because I would really enjoy seeing how you remember that God provides for us and the story of the quail. I would love to pray before we end our time together. Dear Lord, thank you for always providing for us, for knowing what we need. And thank you, Lord, for loving us and keeping us safe. And Lord, I just ask protection over each person listening here today. And that, Lord, you would stir up in their hearts a desire to talk with you because we know how much you love us and how much you care and how much you want to listen. Amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed our time together today. Um, I will hopefully see many of you next Wednesday on our Zoom. And if not, then I'll see you on our Summer Safari episodes. Have a great week.